So this is Xavier Caruso, um, who will be talking about uh, effective piano concert. Thanks. So first of all, I'd like to thank the organizer for giving us the opportunity to be here. And um, so the, the aim of my talk is to give some uh, ideas about uh, what can uh, be doable in effective PID code theory and what can uh, we might hope to be delivered in the next picture. Uh, uh, for now, uh, uh, almost nothing is implemented, so we are working on that. Uh, with uh, uh, David and uh, Jeremy and Tristan. And okay, so I will explain later what we want and what we are doing now and uh, what we uh, would like to do. So uh, let me first um, let me first explain what is what is my my, my goal. So the idea is just to roughly speaking, the idea is to provide uh, tools to compute with. Um, uh, uh, PID Galois representation of uh, finite extension over QP. So let's start with K, finite extension of QP. Finite. So P is a prime number. <coughs> and different from one. <laughs> and uh, and uh, let's K bar be uh, an algebraic closure. And GK is a Galois group of k bar over k. And we know that um, a representation of this group is, uh, is very important in arithmetic for many applications. And, um, and, uh, and the problem is that this group is quite complicated to, to, to manipulate because we don't have a, a good description of the GK. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, an important question, actually, to find such a nice question. <coughs> and, uh, but anyway, uh, we have uh, several tools to, um, to, to understand the representation of this group. And uh, these tools are more or less what we call PID code theory. So uh, when, when, when I speak, uh, so sorry, I should have said that uh, uh, representation for me is always with coefficient in, uh, in uh, QP, on a uh, finite extension of QP, and not a QL representation. <coughs> and uh, this, representation, this representation are very, very, uh, say, uh, um, th th there is a very large class of representation, uh, much more larger, for instance, as a LID representation with coefficient in QL or co coefficient uh, representation over C. Or, yeah, okay, so um, there are many questions you, sh you, you might ask about this representation, but in this talk I want just to focus on uh, one of them, in which I'm currently interested, and uh, just to explain uh, from this question uh, what kind of, uh, of uh, arithmetic uh, problems happens when we want to use okay, the idea of theory for, to, to solve this question. So the question is, is quite simple, say. So I start with B, a representation of GK. So say B is a QP vector space of finite dimension. So finite. All my representation will be of finite dimension. If I forget to say it, just add it in a way. And uh, if we have such a representation, the always exists a lattice T inside V, so T is a lattice, is a ZP lattice, stable by GK. So it always exists because uh, GK is compact and T also. And so you can you can pick any lattice and then uh, just uh, consider all this conjugate and take the sum of this and keep something stable under GK. And uh, and then you, when, when you have a lattice, it's, it's convenient to look at the quotient t over pt. And so it's a representation of gk, but with coefficients in fp, in the residue field. And this representation now, uh, say, uh, easier to understand, because the field is fine. And even, even more, you can 
consider the semi-simplification. So the semi-simplification is just uh, the direct sum of all the irreducible components of the over PT. <coughs> so I mean, uh, you, you, you consider um, um, uh, a sequence of uh, some modules, so that each quotient is irreducible and takes a direct sum, it doesn't, it doesn't depend on the sequence. And actually, it also does not depend on t, but just on d. If you pick another lattice, then you get, a, uh, you get the same semi-simplified representation. Not the same representation, t over pt may vary, but the semi-simplified is always the same. And so it's a kind of invariant associated to v, and we want to compute it. And actually, as I said before, representation with coefficients in FP are much more simpler, but semi-simple representations are really, really simpler. They are just uh, a, a sum of induction of characters. So we can prove a theorem like this. And so at least if k is QP, but if k is not QP, we have a very explicit description. And so we might hope to, uh, we, we really would like to, 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 to find an algorithm which produce a sequence of uh, characters, and characters are just periodic numbers and uh, are easy, very easily described, I would say. Okay, so it's a problem I'm concerning. And uh, so how, do, <coughs> how can we solve this problem using our, our, our algorithmics? So it means that uh, I, I would like to start with a concrete representation B. I mean, uh, I, I, I will say later what, what concrete means. <laughs> it's not so clear. But, and, uh, and, and compute this semi-simplification uh, and give the result, I just output uh, some, some characters given by uh, uh, elements in ZP or in the residue field or something like that, something very concrete. And, okay, so uh, actually it's quite difficult to, to, to start from, uh, from any representation B because as I said before, uh, it's not so. It's not. It's not easy to describe such a representation because the Kelvin group is is complicated object. So you have various theories to do that. Um, for instance, uh, uh, the theory of phi gamma modules, or other ones. The theory of phi gamma modules is um, is so. I say, I. I, I, I should say that I, I would say that um, for now I don't know how to uh, how to manipulate figure modules. So for this talk I, I won't speak about this and I just will uh, do an extra assumption and I assume that this representation is uh, semi-stable. So and in that case we have other theory to the other simpler say simpler in the sense that objects are, are simpler to, to, to manipulate. Other simpler theory to, to describe the representation B. So assume B semi stable. <coughs> so I don't want to give the definitions, it won't be, really be very important for the rest of the talk. So in this talk, I, I really want to focus on algorithmic issues. So just a very long introduction, and after that, I, I, I will just uh, speak about. Uh, uh, Algorithmics meaning uh, okay, and um, so I assume that B is semi-stable, and in that case, um, uh, classical PID coach theory say meaning the the, the first uh, the, the first module introduced by Fontaine, the first works of Fontaine, uh, gives a, a, a description of B in terms of Fibonacci module. So then B is uh, described say by its Filter PM modules. So maybe you don't know what is a filter PM module, but it's not very important. So it is, but uh, just have to to know for this talk that it's a vector space defined over uh, say k over QP unramified. So it's not essential, but it's better. So defined over k in that case, and uh, equipped with a filtration, a map phi and a map n, <coughs> satisfying some uh, relations 
For instance, we have uh, phi times n, phi composed by n equals p n phi. Uh, no, in the real direction, n phi equals p phi, p phi n. And, uh, and also compatibility between the four and the filtration, which is called admissibility. But anyway, so it's an, an object quite concrete. It's a vector space over, over, over k, that's over qp, equipped with two maps and a filtration. So it's, it can be represented on the computer by uh, two matrix, a matrix of phi and the matrix of n, and for instance, a matrix for the filtration together with the, the, the jump of the filtration, so a list of integers. So it's something very concrete. Okay. Hope to, hopefully we, we, we should be able to, to work with. And, okay, and, uh, and from this data, I want to derive uh, <coughs> the, 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 this representation, which is also something concrete. So uh, actually the, 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 the question I, 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 I am addressing now, is uh, and also to be uh, in some sense feasible. I mean that um, uh, so the question maybe the answer is complicated, but the question is clear. <laughs> we start from, from something which is defined over k with we, we uh, two, two, two or three matrices and a list of integers, and we want to produce another list <coughs> of integers. <laughs> okay, and um, and for that, of course, we 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 would like to follow the definition. So we, should, we would like to pick t a latest inside b, and to compute t over pt, to semi-simplify, and to read the, 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 the answer. Okay, but uh, of, of course uh, we want to pick t inside b, but something uh, defined at this level of filtered phi modules, and here the theory is, uh, so spiadic out theory is, uh, is uh, <coughs> exits, but it's much more complicated from an algorithmic point of view and so for theoretic point of view, meaning that uh, a, a representation t inside v does not correspond to a, to a, to a lattice in the, to a, an actual lattice in this filtered field module, but to a, an object, a much more complicated object in general. And, and okay, so let me explain this. So it's say Broy of Kizin's theory. So say Broy Kizin. <coughs> And this theory says that um, to, uh, by a filter of analysis, let me call it D. And it says that to D, one can associate something which is script D, which is a phi module. So a phi module is a module equipped with a map phi, but defined over the ring S. 1 over p, where s <coughs> is something like w uh, double bracket u. And w, I should mention here, is a ring of integer k. Okay. And so you see that uh, if you want to use uh, Broglie's in theory, then you need to, to, to have some tools to work around this ring of power series with coefficient on, in a periodic ring. It's uh, something you need, but one, uh, okay, but with this theory, with this uh, D script, then uh, we can, I mean, in this, in, in, so I mean that just in this D script, uh, we can find an object corresponding to T, to the lattice, which is just a lattice in this grid, which was M, for instance. So it's lying in this grid, and it's a, a lattice, so stable by the Frobenius, <coughs> and defined over just S, without inverting P. And now we have this M, we can just uh, compute m over p to <coughs> m mod p, and this m mod p corresponds to this uh, to this representation t mod p, p t. I mean that there exists a functor uh, from the, the category of uh, of uh, uh, modules over s over p s 
equipped with a four values to the, to the category of uh, representation, and then m mod, n mod p correspond via this functor to the representation t mod pt. And you can even go further and semi simplify this m mod t, so there is not a map set like this. You can take the semi simplification. And this semi simplification corresponds to the representation you want to, 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 to compute. And, uh, and what? And uh, of course, you are, uh, uh, I said before that uh, we have a, a very explicit description of semi simplification of uh, GK, but we have also a very explicit uh, description of the semi, -simpl uh, semi simple objects in this category. And the, 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 the the, the, the integers or the, the, the output we would like to, to compute uh, can be read from this object. And so we can do the whole computation at this level. And so the, the point is that in this, uh, with this, uh, this setting, uh, the Garo group completely disappears. But on the other hand, instead of working ob uh, on, uh, over uh, k or a finite extension of k or I don't know, or qp or something like this, we have to work over this ring s, which is a ring of power series. And we should, uh, so uh, as, a as a preliminary, we, we, we really need to understand the arithmetic of module over this s, how to do it, I mean, how to do, how to do it efficiently on a computer. Okay, so it's a, it's a motivation for, for, for what uh, is the reason why I'm, I'm I was interested in uh, this arithmetic over over this kind of ring S, and uh, now I just would like I would like to to say a little bit about that, and maybe just forget a for, forget a little this introduction I don't know, but this is the motivation, and so first first of all let me say that. Um, uh, this functor is, in some sense, explicit, meaning that we have a kind of explicit formula to have to 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 describe to to, to compute this this script uh, starting from this thing. So it's not very the hard part, although it's not also so simple. This this one is also very easy because it's just a reduction modulo p. So you have the, the matrix of the Frobenius and just you reduce it modulo p, and so it's, it's there is nothing to do. So the out part is here, the first one, and the second <coughs> one is here. And uh, so, I, and in the sequence, I just want to, to, to present objects and to focus on these two parts. Anyway, okay. So let me erase it. So say, uh, I'm going to make it two. So first of all, we, we, we need to, to have a good, a, a good theory or a good class, saying if, we, if you are programming in Sage, to, um, to work with uh, modules over S, over, over S and over S uh, fingers. And so let me start with uh, S inverse. So modules. So actually, I should say P modules, but P is not important at this level. Over S fingers. So it seems to be not so hard because the point is that the, the, the theorem you want, the, or the proposition which is well known, is that this ring P inverse, uh, P. Uh, uh, sigma, sorry, S one over P is uh, Euclidean, and so we have a lot of. Uh, so I mean, it's enough to implement the Euclidean division to have a lot of uh, basic uh, tools. Uh, so, for instance, uh, we have for matrices because I'm. Interested in matrices, essentially. We have Hermit number four. <coughs> so 
means normal form also. Uh, we have, I don't know, etc. And we have classical algorithm to compute kernels, co kernels, and so on. Using, using Ahmed normal forms, means normal forms. Okay. So this is the first point of view, and it actually works. So the, 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 the division, the Euclidean division is not very complicated to, uh, to, 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 to implement. And uh, we should be a little bit um, careful uh, regarding to precision, because uh, it's not so clear what is a precision, what is a precision for instance. Of course, in, in this ring, P to the N is invertible, because I, am, I have inverted P. But if you cut a, if you cut your series, but you, uh, if you truncate your series, but you repeat to the end, then it's also zero. So you have to. So, but the same problem appears when you deal with uh, 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 when you are working over QP. So it's not very new. It just it's more complicated because you have two variables and you have to to, to, to understand the relationship between them. Okay. And. So this is the first thing you, you, you can do, but uh, you, you, you have another solution to work over this modulus over S1 over P, and actually it would be very important for, for the application I have in mind, so uh, I just want to mention it, is that uh, this, this ring <coughs> is uh, the ring of, of convergence, Analytic functions, analytic and boundary. Functions on the unit disk, the open unit disk. And so you may also think as um, um, that um, a module over this ring is a shift over. Uh, or over this, uh, uh, this space. So you can consider it as a rigid space, or I don't know. So if you have M, a module, over S the inverse, it defines a coherent chip over the space. Right? And so th th there is, um, th there is two, two, two points of view for these modules. Uh, first one is just to use basic uh, ba stand standard tools. You just uh, consider that your ring is Euclidean. So, concretely, what, it, uh, uh, yes. concretely what does it mean? It means that each time I have a point x, or an open subset, let's say a point x in. Um, in, uh, in this disk. <coughs> so x may, might be, uh, is not necessary in k, but it's in k bar. I can consider it's minimal polynomial, px, or minimal polynomial of x, okay. And uh, to, 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 this, to this m, I can associate this talk over, um, over M, which is just the tensor product of M with the direct limit, the uh, inverse limit of uh, S1 over P modulo this polynomial. The nth power. And this ring, this local ring, is nothing but the residual field. K x, which is just k of x. As a power series uh, ring 
for girls is uh, this is uh, this residue field say k of x, and in the in one new variable which is which is uh, say u x, and it should be pink at u minus x. <coughs> So if I have a point in k bar, I can consider this completion mx, and I I I claim that the data for this completion mx determine, determines m together with together maybe with um, uh, gluing some gluing data in some sense, but uh, let me be not so precise and. The point is that this mx is uh, easier to describe because it's uh, it's um, um, it is defined over uh, power series ring uh, over a field and not over a periodic space, and so it's again a DVR and you can use uh, traditional tools to describe this. Okay, but instead of just having a module, we have a collection, an infinite collection of modules. But for instance, if m is embedded. If M is, is given a subspace of S 1 over P times D, then Mx naturally appears as a subspace of this, uh, let me call this uh, Sx, <laughs> Sx to the power D. And uh, for um, almost of all X, I mean uh, all except a finite number of them, uh, this inclusion is inequality. So you can, if you want to describe, to, 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 to give you, um, if you want to, to describe this M um, with this, uh, with this uh, point of, in this point of view, you just have to, to give you a finite number of points, X, in the algebraic closure of K, together with this module MX embedded in this, and the, the data of this module is just, the data of the elementary devices, uh, of, this in, of, of the inclusion uh, together with a, 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 a basis really, really <coughs> for, in which uh, mx is just, I mean that, uh, su su such an inclusion is uh, always, so there always exists a basis, e1d of d such that u to the power n. So, sorry, ux is a basis. Thanks. And so I can just describe this this uh, this module M by giving all the x uh, for which the inclusion is straight, and for all this x, I just give a basis and this integers n1 and d. So it's another way to describe this module. And actually, it's important for us because I told just before that this correspondence between d, 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 d and script and uh, script d is uh, is uh, is uh, explicit. We have explicit formula, but this explicit formula are given in these terms. So it, it gives you uh, a, a, a family of x. A finite, actually, the family is infinite, but I don't want to. To enter into these details, so it gives you a, a certain number of uh, of uh, x together with uh, this basis and this integers and i. And if you want to, um, if you want to to, to to so actually you need an algorithm to go from this form to this one, the classical form, because after afterwards we would like we would like to uh, to compute latest in this. To compute lattices in, uh, in this module defined of, over S p invert, p invert, and um, for lattices, this description uh, doesn't work. So we really want to go for, from this description to uh, the classical one, uh, just uh, find a, a, a families of generators in the in Hermit normal form, for instance. Okay, so you need an algorithm for that, but it's not very difficult. So it's just based on uh, LU factorization, LU factorization, and so uh, roughly speaking, you compute uh, every normal form at each x, and then you try to glue it, to, to glue them together. 
But uh, it may happen that it is those that were uh, uh, in some very particular case, you may have some problem, but you can solve them. I, I don't want again to enter to enter into the details. Okay, so that's that's what I want I wanted to say for for uh, modules about this S one over P. Now. Let me explain what we can do for modules over S without inversion P. So in that case, uh, you don't you don't have um, a Neuclidean ring or a, a principal domain, even. <coughs> and so, um, for instance, it's not true that a module over S, which embeds into S to the power D, is generated by uh, at most D generators. And actually, we can have an infinite number, uh, not an infinite, but uh, uh, um, arbitrary large uh, family of generators. Okay. And so for arithmetic, for, for algorithmic, algorithmic application, it's not so good. Because you want to, at some point, you want to bound, to bound the, the size of the matrix which enters in C. And so the solution to, to this problem is, is the following. We have a theorem uh, due to Iwasawa, a famous theorem, which says the following. Say if you start with M, a module over S, say embedded in some SD, is not really. Uh, uh, necessary, but it's better to say in this context. You can come, you can define something which I call max m. It's not a standard notation, but it's a good way, I think. <laughs> which is the set of all x in s to the power d, such that there exists some m, some integer m, uh, with the following property. Uh, we require that u to the power uh, u, u to the n times x <coughs> and e to the n times x both belong to uh, M. So, if you want to understand this, de this definition, it's, conven it's convenient to, to draw a picture. So for instance, assume that M, example, assume that M is a, generate, is a module generated by U and P. U S plus P S inside S. <coughs> okay. And look at so if uh, an element I, I can represent an element in S by this Newton polygon. So it means that uh, for all n, I uh, if uh, x is an element of S and x is the sum of a i u i, I put in the base the <coughs> point of coordinates a i, uh, p d evaluation of a i. It's a Newton polygon, so the convex out of this point is a Newton polygon. And so the, 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 the element of, of uh, u s is just the element whose Newton polygon is in, lie in this area. It's multiple of u. And it's one, and here it's again one. And <coughs> the element of PS is the element uh, exactly what the, those elements uh, whose um, Newton polygon is in this area. And so the element of the sum is something like uh, this uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, so. surface. And so what is now max of m? Max of m is a set of all x in SD, such that uh, this property holds. But you can say, you, you can see that, for instance, if you start with 1, which is a little bit here, then if you multiply by u, you, 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 you end up in this area. And if you multiply by p, you, by, by <coughs> p yes, or by suitable power of p, you end up also in this area. 
And so the, what, what you are doing when you compute mass is just to fill this corner. And you see that when you fill this corner, the, the, the area is just in, is now generated by just one, one point. Before, be, before doing this, this, this kind of completion, you add two generators, and now you are just one. And uh, the theorem of Iwanawa says that it's uh, what it happened in general. So the theorem is the following, is that, uh, what is the theorem? Is that this max of m is always free, and uh, is actually, and is the smallest <coughs> free uh, submodule of D containing uh, SD containing M. And so the ID is instead of uh, is instead of doing computation with uh, usual operation, after each operation, I will take this max. For instance, if I compute, if I want to compute U S plus P S, I, I, I won't compute uh, this module which is gener uh, generated by two generators. But instead of that, I compute this one, which is uh, the, uh, the free module, uh, which is which is just again a free module. Okay. And <coughs> doing this, uh, you can you can you can do computation with um, uh, with modules over, over S uh, without uh, with free modules over S. You always stay in the category of free modules. And so for the application, I have in mind, it's not very it's not it's not uh, it's not a problem. But uh, I don't really want to explain the why, why, but the, the reason is that at the end, I know that the answer would be a free module. And if at each step, I replace the module by the smallest one, which is, uh, which is free and contains the module and computing, then I'm sure that at the end, I get the right answer. And OK, so uh, I use this theorem of Iwazawa. And so instead of computing, uh, as I say, instead of computing the sum, for instance, I, comp I compute the max of the sum. And anyway, and in any case, I need, a, I need an algorithm to compute this max. And uh, it can be done more or less easily by, Gauss by just modifying a bit Gauss elimination. Wait, I, I don't want to describe the algorithm because it's, it's not very difficult, but it's not so heavy. I don't, I don't want to spend so much time in describing the algorithm. If you have a question, you can ask me. But uh, can can be computed. So I just write that max of m can be computed using uh, kind of Gauss elimination. I mean, if I know if I know generators of m, I can compute. Uh, but there is a problem, so a very very important problem for us. The following, for instance, assume that I take almost the same example, but I, I uh, consider now m equals u s plus sorry, equals p s plus u to the power n s for some n. Of course, you see, you see that this, uh, this, uh, you, you can argue as I, I have done before and just prove that the max of m is s. <coughs> but if n is large enough, then this u to the power n f, n, s, does not appear in your theory because you have truncated. And so you end up with max of m equals p s. And so it's um, it's a kind of problem because uh, the, the research really depends on 
the you on the the, the the point where series are truncating. And um, so in, in other terms, I mean that this construction max is not continuous. And and it's really it's really annoying. <laughs> and um, okay, so what is the answer? There is a solution to this problem, but it's not so it's not so obvious. It's the following: instead of working about this, uh, 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 over this ring S, I work I I decide to uh, <coughs> modify a bit the ring. So for for uh, new, which is a positive in, a positive real number, I introduce a, a ring S new, which is a ring uh, set of all series. A i u i such that the valuation of a i is uh, greater than or equal minus new i. So if new equals zero, then I just require that the valuation of a i uh, is uh, non-negative, meaning that a i is a, a integral element, and so it's just uh, s. But for uh, larger new, it's something which is uh, larger. And so, um, in a, it's also the if you prefer the the other interpretation in terms of shifts, it's also the ring of uh, analytic <coughs> functions on the disk of. Um, uh, Center zero and radius uh, p to the minus r, p to the minus new. Sorry, uh, so it's, it's open. Open this and bound it by one. And <coughs> it's not true that it was our theorem uh, holds for this ring S new, when new is not zero, actually when new is not an integer, but you have a kind of replacement of your mother's theorem. And from the algorithmic point of view, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, no, it's harmless. So you can, you can do as it was a theorem also. So I, I, I haven't explained you this algorithm of post elimination, so I can explain how so it generalized to S new. But <laughs> But it is. It, it does. <coughs> okay. And the point is that now, if you if you if you if you start with this m, which is p s plus u to the power of s, so generated by this p here. B and say u to the power n here. And you see that if I extend scalars to, um, to S nu, that instead of drawing a line, uh, uh, an horizontal line like this, I should draw a line of slope <coughs> minus 2. So, uh, in this picture. So the sum module generated by P is this one, and the sum module generated by U is this one. And if the slope is, is, um, is, is uh, is uh, large enough, then you see that uh, the sum module generated by u to the n is included in the sum module generated by p. And so if n is, if, if the slope is well chosen, even if, s, if n is very large, then uh, you can, uh, uh, then it's true that, uh, the, that the max of m will be just ps, because m is just ps. And so if you, if you, if you allow you, if you allow to, to change a bit this new and you do the computation, <coughs> then uh, you you uh, a certain property of continu of continuity holds, and so it was what we it, it's what we do. So when we do the computation, uh, we uh, allow us to modify a bit this new. And uh, we can find a precise bound. Uh, we can we can figure out how, how this new should be modified to in, in order to get uh, the right answer at each step. 
And um, so in some sense, if you want, you can see this new as a, a, a kind of precision data over the ring, not over the elements, in some sense. So first of all, you, you are working over S, which is something which is defined on the, on the wall. So here you have zero. You have the disk of radius one. And uh, element, uh, the modulus of S should be fault, can be fault, as I said before, as uh, co-relationship on this, on this space. And now when I do computations, when I, do, when I compute the max, for instance, when I do some computations, it's not true, I cannot, uh, the answer I found won't be defined in the wall space, but, some, but I need to shrink a bit this ball. And so it means that uh, I still have function in some sense on, the, on, this, on, the, on this space, but I don't know the value they, they, the, the value they take at, uh, on this analysis. And so I, I lose some kind of precision. Uh, so, okay. so the idea, is, the idea of that is that this new should be thought at, as a, an extra precision data. And uh, w w what is amazing is that um, it's really this, uh, this, this new which gives the right uh, precision, the, the, the right way to, 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 co to, to control the precision. You, you, you cannot do something by say, saying I cut the series modulo p to the n and u to the n. Even if you do something very, very large, you still have problem of continuity. It's very difficult to, 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 have, to have a result of uh, uh, regarding precision uh, if you don't introduce these new rings. I, I have tried a lot. <laughs> and OK. So now, how many times do I have? OK. So now I can go, I can move on and um, speak about phi modules over S modulo PS, which is S1. So, uh, <coughs> yes, S new, but anyway. So I, I just removed the new. There is a, okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so um, before I, I just forgot about the fee. It was not important for 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 all I have said here, because. So actually, maybe I should I should I should say something as before is that if so we have this d you want to compute this d I say that we have explicit formulas in the shift version and now I want to compute the m sorry I want to compute the latest m in d and for that it's, it's the algorithm is quite simple you just start with any latest m zero. And uh, you want something which is stable under, fit, under the Frobenius fee. And so you can you just define m equals the sum, equals the max, sorry, of the sum of all the image of m0 under, under p. Just do a computation like this. So of, of course you have to figure out uh, when you stop the sum. And you have also to figure out how many. So it, it, it tells you how many max you will take. And at each map, the slope decreases, so you have to, 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 adjust, to, to adjust 